Okay, weight and balance part three, how to actually calculate weight and balance. So remember we said that calculating weight and balance for an airplane is important for two reasons. Um, we need to keep the airplane within its total weight limits. Um, and I talked last time about the maximum gross weight or maximum takeoff weight. So in this example, we're using numbers typical from a Cessna 172. The maximum gross weight is 2,300 pounds. So we need to keep the airplane within its weight limits. Um, and there's actually some additional weight limits that are specified in the pilot's operating handbook for this airplane. It says that the maximum weight we can put in baggage area one is 120 pounds. The maximum weight we can put in baggage area two is 50 pounds. And the maximum weight of the two areas together is 120 pounds. So one, we need to obey these weight limits. And the other reason it's important is we need to keep the center of gravity within its allowable limits so that the airplane remains stable and controllable. So we're going to need to calculate where the center of gravity is, considering all the weight we've put into the airplane, and check that it's within the allowable limits. So how are we going to calculate where the center of gravity is? So this is the key equation for weight and balance. It's weight times arm equals moment. Remember the arm is the location measured from the datum line of a particular station. So for the front seats, it's 40 inches behind the datum line. For the fuel tank, it's 48 inches behind the datum line. And remember moments are tilting forces. So if we have the center of gravity here, we talked last time about how 100 pounds right here does not produce the same tilting force as 100 pounds placed way out here. So to find where the center of gravity is, we're going to uh, multiply the weight at each station times the arm for that station, which I've already got written out in this table here, to find the moment or the tilting force that is caused by the weight at that station. Then we're going to add up all those tilting forces, all those moments, and all the weights, and we're going to be able to solve that equation to find the arm or the location of the center of gravity. Okay, so let's do a sample. So let's say we're going for a flight and we have two people. We've got a pilot and a front seat passenger. And let's say that we've got someone who's 180 pounds, and we've got a passenger who's 160. And then let's say we have full fuel, full usable fuel in the 172 here with standard tanks is 40 gallons. So we'll put in 40 gallons of fuel. And let's say we've got some bags and we're gonna stick them in baggage area one. Let's say we got 50 pounds of bags in area one. So let's do the weight and balance. So the first row here is for fuel. So we need to put in the weight for the fuel. Uh, well, I said we have 40 gallons, but what about the weight? So Avgas weighs six pounds per gallon. So you need to do a little bit of math. 40 gallons times six equals 240 pounds. Okay, so we've got 240 pounds of fuel and the moment for that fuel, weight times arm is moment, so 240 pounds times 48 inches, we get 11,520 for the moment, and those are pound inches. Uh, a lot of times you'll see um, the moments, just for simplicity, divided by 1,000. So if you see a number like 57.6 instead of 57,600, they're using moments divided by 1,000, just to make the numbers a little smaller and easier to work with. Okay, so let's go to the next line, front seats. Okay, we've got two people in the front seats, 180 pounds and 160 pounds. So that's gonna be what, 280, so 340 pounds total in the front seats. Okay, so we've got 340 pounds in the front seats. So what is the tilting force that that causes? What is the moment? Well, weight times arm is moment, 340 pounds times 40 inches, 13,000. 600 inch pounds. All right, rear seats. Uh, well, we don't have anyone in the rear seats, so that's just zero. So that's pretty simple. Okay, 
So zero moment for the, the rear seats. Uh, what about baggage area one? We said we put 50 pounds of bags back there. Okay, so 50 pounds. What is the tilting force from that? Well, weight times arm, 50 pounds times 95 inches is 4,750 inch pounds. And last we got baggage area two. We didn't put anything back there. So just like the rear seats, that is gonna be zero. Zero and zero. All right, so let's add up all the weights to get the gross weight for the airplane as we have it loaded now. All right, so the empty weight plus the weight of the fuel, the passengers and the bags all adds up to 2,084 pounds. Okay, so we're within the maximum weight limit, right? The maximum gross weight is 2,300, so that's good. We're under that. And as far as these other limits we have for the baggage areas, um, we got 50 pounds in area one, so that's less than the 120 limit and nothing in area two. So we've met all of the maximum weight limits. So what about the center of gravity? We're trying to calculate the location of the center of gravity so that we can make sure it's within its limits. So what we're gonna do is we've added up all the weights. Now we're gonna add up all the tilting forces, all the moments. And then we're going to be able to solve this equation to calculate the arm of the center of gravity, the location behind the datum line of the center of gravity, because we'll have the total weights and the total moments, we can calculate that center of gravity arm. Okay, so adding up the total moments, we get 87,000. 470 and doing a little bit of algebra with the equation we've got here weight times arm equals moment if we divide both sides of that by the weight divided each side of the equation by the weight the weight is going to cancel out on the left side and we're left with on the left side the arm equals moment divided by weight so if we want the arm for the center of gravity of the total airplane. We'll take the total moments divided by the total weight. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so the total moment of 87,470 divided by the total weight of 2,084 equals the total arm for the center of gravity of the airplane. It's 41.97 inches behind the datum line. So let's see, let's put our center of gravity on there, maybe somewhere like so. And now we need to check that that is within the allowable limits for the center of gravity. So we'll have to take a look in the weight and balance section of the pilot's operating handbook. So this chart here has the loaded airplane weight in pounds on the left side, and the airplane center of gravity location on the bottom. So our total weight was 2,083. So right around this line right here, and we'll follow that over. Our center of gravity was 41.97 inches, so just about right at 42. So we'd follow that up to where those two lines intersect. 2,083 uh, or 2,084 pounds and 41.97 inches right here. So we are within the, what we call the envelope for the center of gravity. We're within that envelope. So the airplane is balanced. Um, you'll also see that we've got normal category and utility category. Um, there's certain operations that are only allowed when the airplane is loaded in the utility category. So in that case, the center of gravity would need to fall within this box here. Um, for example, spins are only allowed in the utility category. You could also use this chart here if you wanted. Um, it's the same center of gravity envelope, but instead of weight and center of gravity location, it's weight and total moments. So, and it's moments divided by a thousand. So the total weight, again, 2,084 pounds. That's going to be this line here. And our total moment was 87,470, or divided by 1,000, 
So you could find that down here, 87, about 87.5. It's going to be somewhere in the middle here. And you'd follow that up to 2,084 pounds. And you would see that it's within the normal envelope. So that just saves you the step of actually calculating the CG location. And one last thing here, we've got this other handy chart if you want to save yourself the step of actually calculating um, the moment for each station. You can use this chart. Um, on the left here, you've got the load weight, and then we have different lines for the different stations. So pilot and front seat passenger, fuel, rear passenger. So say we had our 340 pounds in the front seat, um, so we'd go up to 340 and we'd follow that line over to the pilot and front seat passenger line and then you would drop down and read the moment for that at the bottom here. Uh, and again, it would be divided by a thousand. You'd have to keep that in mind, but that saves you actually calculating the moment 